Christian Bryant, many thanks for tuning in, folks. You could be off worrying about holiday travel or relearning how to wrap gifts, which is a skill I only use once a year, if that, but instead, you're here with us. But first, Congress recently approved raising the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion. The resolution we will vote on will provide for raising of the debt limit to a level commensurate with funding necessary to get into 2023. Now, that's a lot of money, but if they didn't raise it, the country wouldn't be able to pay our bills. Things like social security benefits would be delayed, the military wouldn't be paid, and food assistance would stop. It would be disastrous for the American economy, for global financial markets, and for millions of families and workers whose financial security would be jeopardized by delayed payment. This move prevented the US from defaulting on our debt for the first time ever, but not everyone was crazy about the idea of raising it. This idea puts all of us in a box and I don't appreciate it. And I won't forget it. We have this debt because we spend more money than we take in. Our current national debt is about $30 trillion. The majority of it was approved in previous years. Raising the debt limit doesn't allow for new spending, but allows the treasury to pay for spending that's already been approved. But how exactly does the debt ceiling work? And why do we have it in the first place? The US and Denmark are the only Western countries with a debt ceiling, but the way it works looks different in both countries. The US debt ceiling was created in 1917 when Congress passed the Second Liberty Bond Act. Before that, each loan or bond were approved as they were taken out. With the ceiling, there was a limit set for how much could be borrowed that required congressional approval to increase the total amount. Since then, the debt ceiling has been raised dozens of times. Once the limit is hit, the Treasury can take extraordinary measures to extend how long it can continue paying its bills. And the government had to do that for a few months this year as they debated if and how to raise it. Across the way, Denmark established theirs a bit later in the 1990s, but their debt ceiling is so high that they rarely get close to it. So it's not a recurring debate like it is here in the US. The closest they ever came to reaching their ceiling was in 2010, but then after that, they doubled it. Some places that don't have debt ceilings have what's called a debt break. It's a rule that debt has to stay under a certain percentage of a country's GDP. We can look to Poland and Germany as examples. Poland aims to stay under 60% of their GDP, and Germany aims to keep borrowing within a third of their GDP. The US should be good for now until after the midterm elections. We're gonna stay on this topic for a bit longer and bring in our congressional correspondent, Nathaniel Reed, who spends a lot of time on Capitol Hill. And he reminded me a bit earlier that he's only been on the show a handful of times. So Nate, we're bringing you in for all the big stuff. Um, we're glad to have you. Can you explain the politics behind the debt ceiling and why lawmakers frequently go back and forth about raising it? Well, Christian, that's a great question. And look, it just, it, it's inter-party conflict. It is a political football that they love tossing back and forth. The debt ceiling is a massive issue. They run into it roughly once a year, if not once every other year or so, which is the, the current extension we're seeing now, that $2.5 trillion. That should get us through the midterms, at least. So I guess the political football has been somewhat punted. Remember, if Republicans were to take control of the House or Senate after the midterms, it would be up to them to raise it. There are really two ways to raise it. You can either just suspend it for a period of time, say like a year and a half, two years. That's what President Trump did on the most recent occurrence of getting close to hitting the debt ceiling or you can raise it by a specific dollar figure. Now, Republicans in this latest iteration made Democrats raise it by a specific dollar figure because it's a political football, because they're able to say now they have their messaging victory. They can say, look, Democrats want to spend $2.5 trillion in the next two years. Remember, it's larger than that. It's America's credit card. It's things America has already agreed to pay for, not necessarily Democratic priorities, but also Republican priorities and bipartisan priorities like paying the military, things like that, social security. So it's a much more complex issue than either party necessarily makes it out to be. One thing that's clear though, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader this time around said, the US will not default. Nate, I really appreciate the uh, football imagery. I think this is really helping some of our viewers to understand what's happening right now. I, I'm curious to know, what is the likelihood of them getting rid of the debt ceiling altogether. There's a hypothetical for you. What, what's the likelihood of that? Well, I'd say it's a little bit larger than a hypothetical, Christian. This is something they've discussed year after year of, you know, can we just get rid of this debt ceiling? It's artificial. It doesn't exist in reality. It's an artificial limit on how much the U.S. can borrow. There's nothing that actually says necessarily in the Constitution 
you are only able to spend X, Y, Z amount of money. It's just an artificial limit, which is more or less a political football created, you know, earlier in the 1900s. So there is talk every couple of years about getting rid of it. But remember, it all comes down to the political football and to optics. What are the optics if a party says, we want to get rid of the ceiling of debt, we want to spend as much as possible and not make that accountable to anyone? Now, if you took a blind vote on this, you know, had everyone put their heads down and say, let's vote on getting rid of the debt ceiling, it would probably have a lot of support. But remember, when they're playing politics here, when parties are trying to make the other party look bad, there's no votes to get rid of the debt ceiling on a broad scale just because they simply, you don't want to be the party that gets rid of something which theoretically keeps track of how much the U.S. is spending. Newsy congressional correspondent, Nathaniel Reed, somebody who we only see every blue moon. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me.